You're out there in Minneapolis, folks. You're dealing with the cold and you're looking for them deals, man. Where are them deals? You're looking high, you're looking low, you can't find them. Am I right? That's where we're at today, man. Finding uh, rental properties that make sense from a cash flow perspective out there in the Twin Cities. Twin Cities, that's Minneapolis, right? I friggin' hope so. <laughs> Pretty sure that's the Twin Cities. Anyway, it's tough. It's, it's super tough out there in that market, and that's why... Uh, I've had some investors come my way trying to look for me to help them out in their situation, alleviate the stress of the tight Minneapolis market, find them a way to get into cash flow real estate that still makes sense in 2022. And that's what I'm doing today. So let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise. I am here for you. You, 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 not you and you, okay? People, that's what I do. I work with folks from all over the country, all over the world, actually, right? Help you guys find the best cash flow real estate markets, best cash flow real estate properties, give you guys insight into investing, right? There's a lot of different ways to invest. Not all of them are good, am I right? Uh, today, 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 we are, we're going to mark... Mark's an investor from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yo, dude, are the Browns going to get, uh, what's his face, uh, from the Vikings? That's what I want to know, right? Stefanski and him hook it back up. Not a sports show. It's not what we're talking about. Uh, but we are talking about Cleveland, and we are talking about Minnesota, Minneapolis specifically, right? Because, Mark, you are having trouble uh, finding cash flow properties that hit your goals, right? The market's just too tight in 2022, right? It's not 2015, it's not 2014, it's not 2013. Things are tough these days, but that is okay because I am here to find you more profitable deals. So what I have for you today, Mark, is a full-fledged breakdown on this quad that you saw out here in my market, the Cleveland market, and you're like, dude, this one looks good, me and you. Currently, we have uh, a very, very strong offer out on a, another duplex in this market, but the uh, real estate agent and the seller are just dicking around. So who knows what's going on with that one. So that's real estate, though, right? Every deal you put out an offer, folks, doesn't always go through. You got to keep it moving, right? If you want to be a real estate investor, it's not like you just go, Dah, I'm a real estate investor. You make one offer, and then you're an investor. No, no, no. This is a lifestyle, folks. You got to be in the game making moves all the time. And that's what I am here to help you do. So Mark! Without further ado, let's jump into the numbers on your deal. Welcome back. Now we get into the meat and taters. Woo! Meat and taters. Man, the potato is one of versatile food, man. You got french fries, baked potatoes, mashed potatoes, scalloped potatoes, some little cheesy potatoes, hash browns. Can't forget about hash browns, man. I love me some potatoes. Show us nothing to do with potatoes. They'll get back to the game, folks. Focus on real estate. Real estate, not potatoes. Home fries, damn. Anyway, 1376 West 91st Cleveland, 44102. This is a beauty. Now. Says 50 days on the market. That is misleading. It was on the market, and then it fell out. Uh, uh, it, it went off the market, and then it went under contract and fell out of contract. That's what I was trying to say, right? Seller took it off the market because they were going to sell it to a buyer. Buyer flaked, I guess. I don't know. Financing, some issue like that. I don't know. Uh, it's back. It's ready to go. So don't think that it's been on the market 50 days because ain't nobody going to buy it because this is a small deal. You got to do a little work. Uh, have some, some things go your way to get really good numbers on this, but this is a freaking awesome deal, okay? It's four-unit apartment building, number one, okay? That is, folks, my favorite type of investment of all time, right? Just cruising through this here. Uh, it's definitely dated, but we'll get into that. But the fact that this is a four-unit apartment building, that should be ground-level 
the most awesome thing for you to hear, okay? Four unit buildings are by far the best buildings in the world to buy, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Who am I? What the hell have I done? Well, I sold $200 million worth of real estate, real estate just like this, run the largest scattered site portfolio in the Cleveland market. So I know a thing or two about real estate, right? Went from having like no money to making some millions in the biz. So, you know, I feel like I know what I'm talking about in this right here. This is the bay's knees, dog. This is this is sweet, right? The four-unit apartment building is better than the two-unit apartment building. It is better than the three-unit apartment building, right? You're probably like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Not rocket science here, okay? Three is better than two. Four is better than three. Okay, I'm with you, James. The four-unit's better than the five-unit. What? The four-unit is better than the six-unit. The four unit is better than the seven unit. And probably the eight, the nine, the 10, the 11, and the 12 unit, right? Why? That don't make sense. I don't understand. If three's better than two, how is four better than three? But, well, no, four should be better than three, but how is it better than five or six or something? You know, people are getting confused at this point in the show, folks. They're getting confused. How? Is four better than five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Well, has to do with the financing, folks. Financing is, in my opinion, the number one reason to invest in real estate. Uh, you could buy other stuff, you can invest in other businesses and make money, but you can't get financing like you can in real estate, right? That's what this is for us. It's just an investment vehicle, right? Like you could buy Bitcoin. Ain't nobody giving you a thirty year loan to buy Bitcoin. You can buy NFTs. Ain't nobody giving you a thirty year loan to buy NFTs. Also, what in the fuck are NFTs? I don't even fucking understand that shit. Ah! Also, I don't even really get what Bitcoin is, honestly, either. Like, I mean, I get, like, what's going on, but it makes no sense to me. Makes no sense. You know who invests in Bitcoin? Jerk-offs. Jerk-offs invest in Bitcoin. You know who invests in NFTs? Jerk-offs. Don't be a jerk-off, folks, because nobody really understands that shit. So if you're just investing in something you don't understand, you're a jerk-off. What I like to invest in is real stuff, real buildings. You could, you could touch these buildings, right? And the lenders agree with me, okay? Why don't banks give you loans to invest in NFTs, to invest in Bitcoin? Because they're like, ah, this, is, this is volatile. This don't make no sense. But this, this right here, boy, this, this is real. This is tangible. This makes sense. This is safe, okay? Now, the way Fannie and Fetty guidelines work is to get a residential mortgage, you can do single families, duplexes, triplexes, quads. Okay? All right? Those are the best loans. 30-year, fixed interest, low interest, tax deductible, only going to need 25% down. Okay? Those are the best loans. The biggest property you could ever get is going to be a four-unit apartment building, though. Once you get into five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so forth, you now have to get a commercial loan. Not the end of the world, but you can't get 30-year terms. Commercial loans are nowhere near 30-year terms. They're usually like 25 AM, 5-year call, 10-year call, 15-year call, and don't think you're getting into them with 25% down in 2022. Not the way the market works. Prices are too inflated on apartment buildings right now. So that is not going to help. So with the four unit, you get the very best financing in the world and Four happens to be the most amount of rent you can get with those 30-year loans. That, folks, is why I love, 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 love the four-unit apartment building over any other building. And also the fact that it makes some sense is why I love it over other investment vehicles such as Bitcoin, NFTs, the, me the metaverse. Shit. What the hell's the metaverse, y'all? I don't even, I don't even know. Okay, so that, that's what I love about the building. As you see, it was dated. Okay, here's the story. Owner-occupied, right? Believe it or not, some people actually live in houses, right? Some people buy houses to live in. They don't just buy them for monetary investment like we do, okay? So this has got a long-time owner-occupant living in this unit, and then he's just renting stuff super cheap to people for like the last 20 years. It's 550 475 375 This is our opportunity to pick up a hell of a deal because this is in one of the most popping neighborhoods in the Cleveland market, folks. This is right here near the lake in Edgewater, okay? This is a super trendy neighborhood, right? You are right smack dab in the middle. Detroit Shoreway, Edgewater, this quad, Lake Erie. 
When you hear about the resurgence in Cleveland, when you hear about gentrification in Cleveland, when you hear about a lot of money getting pumped into this market, okay, it's the big popular cities. It's your Ohio cities. Well, not popular cities, popular neighborhoods. It's your Ohio cities. Over here a little bit more is Tremont. It's downtown, okay? It's Detroit Shoreway. It's Edgewater. We're right freaking there, people. This is where we want to be, and we will be rewarded for that, okay? Because the market rents on this, this is not a professional landlord. This is someone who lives there, and it's just my renting stuff for 20 years. The way to do this, actually get market rent on all these units. We're looking at 900 a unit, folks. 3600 comes in, 43200 for the year. Of that 43200 for the year, my team, we will professionally manage it. Here is all your fixed and variable expense estimates. After all is said and done, you should be walking away clear with almost twenty five k for the year. Now, as far as price, again, don't be confused thinking that there's not a lot of demand for this because of the long days on the market. The thing just fell out of contract. We got to go full price. You got to take this down. Whenever there's a quad, you got to take it down. Whenever there's a quad in such a good neighborhood, you got to take it down. Whenever there's a quad in a neighborhood where you have the ability to push everything up, got to take it down. 275, okay? Then we get that beautiful 30-year loan I kept talking to you about. All you got to do is put down 68, 750, bank kicks in the rest, get all those tenants up to market rent without a turnover. You're looking at a long-term cash-on-cash return of 20%. Now, can you get those super long-term uh, low-rent tenants up to 900? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, what you don't want to do is immediately change their rent to 900 because you'll probably get more uh, than what you need to moving out. Right? You're going to get, you're going to get in this business. You're going to get turnover. It's part of the game. It happens. No way to avoid turnover. You're going to get turnover as a real uh, real estate investor. You're going to get turnover as a landlord. What you don't want is to create artificial turnover, which requires you to pay money out of your pocket. So what I like to do is I like to slowly increase their rents, try to get them to stay as long as possible to get as close to market rent, let the, the neighborhood draw them in. And then if they move out, then we go in, we'll give you a bid to renovate the units, right? Those units were pretty dated, so we're probably looking at over five grand per unit at least. Uh, but we'll have to go through that when the tenants actually move out. But long term, this one is a smoking deal. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.